Recording has started. Well, let's go ahead and get rolling here. We'll see how you did on these. Number one, seven pounds going into ounces. We'll put seven pounds over one. Cancel out pounds. We're going to put pounds on bottom. One pound is 16 ounces. Those pounds cancel out. We have seven times 16, which is 112 ounces. Number two, we're doing the metric conversion. So we've got kilogram, hectogram, decagram, gram, decigram, centigram, and milligram, just to sketch out the chart. Here we're going from kilograms to grams, which is three spots to the right on the chart. So my decimal point moves three spots to the right, and then I have to fill in a missing zero. So 0.47 kilograms is 470 grams. Number three, 6,000 pounds. This is one most of you could probably do in your head. As we know that there are 2,000 pounds in a ton. Pounds cancel out, that is 6,000. Tons over 2,000, 6,000 divided by 2,000 is 3 tons. And number 4, 710 milligrams going to grams. From milligrams to the grams is 3 spots to the left on our chart. So our decimal point has to move 3 spots to the left. There isn't one written here, so we know it's at the end of the number. Going 1, 2, 3 to the left makes that 0.71 grams. So 710 milligrams is 0.71 grams. Next, as we're calculating with these a little bit, we didn't do any of these examples yesterday, but it's an extension of our operations with um, feet and inches. So 11 ounces plus 9 ounces is 20 ounces. And of course, that's bigger than a pound. One pound is 16 ounces. So I take away 16 ounces, I have 4 ounces left. I carry my one pound. One and seven is eight, plus four is 12 pounds. 12 pounds, four ounces. Number six, we are subtracting. So two ounces minus 15 ounces can't be done. We're going to borrow those nine, eight, nine pounds comes eight pounds. And what we borrowed is one pound, which is 16 ounces. So 2 plus 16 makes this 18 ounces now. 18 minus 15 is 3 ounces. And 8 minus 2 is 6 pounds. So it's now 6 pounds, 3 ounces. Any questions on any of those? Okay, so to start off today, I'm going to throw a challenge out there at you. I'm going to tell you that I can throw a baseball at a rate of 90 feet per second. Would you believe me if I made that claim? I think about the baseball. No, well, it might be a good call. Is that fast? I think that's on the baseball field, it's 90 feet from first base to home plate. So I'd be standing at first base, throwing to home plate and getting the ball there in one second. Well, what units are we used to seeing speed in? Miles per hour. Miles per hour, yes. So if we could convert that 90 feet per second into miles per hour, we would have a better idea as to whether that's believable or not. So let's take our 90 feet per second. Anytime we see a rate like that, it's actually two numbers being compared. It's actually 90 feet in one second, per one second. We just shorten it up and just put the fraction in the, the units because it's, it's easier. It's, it takes less space. It's an abbreviation is all it is. So now we want to change in the numerator of our units. We want to change feet into miles. So let's do that. We're going to get rid of feet. Go to miles. 
We went one mile is 5,280 feet. So the feet are gone. So we've, we've changed the numerator of our units. Now in the denominator of our units, we want to go from seconds to hours. So we have to get rid of the seconds. Now we don't necessarily have a direct link to seconds, but we're going to go to minutes here. One minute is 60 seconds. So the seconds are gone. We're in minutes, but we don't want minutes. We want hours. So we've got to get rid of the minutes. Minutes are on bottom, so we put them on top, so they cross cancel. One hour is 60 minutes. So now the minutes do cancel out. Now we are in hours. So on top there, we have 90 times 1 mile times 60 times 60 is 324,000 miles over 1 times 5280 times 1 times 1 hour. So that's 5,280 hours. And now we just have to divide that out. What is that? 61.36 about miles. Didn't you do uh, 60 times 60? Yep. I mean, that's 3,600. Yeah, but I have to do the 90 as well. Oh, okay. I understand. Yep. But yeah, if you wanted to do a direct conversion from seconds to hours, you could have just used the 3,600. Yeah. So we get. 61.36 miles per hour. Now, do you believe I could throw that fast? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to do some serious warm-ups, and I could probably only throw a few at that speed. But I could probably still get a little over 60 miles per hour. So when we're dealing with these measurements that have two units, or rate measurements is what they're called, we sometimes have to convert both units, or just one, but it might not be the numerator. You know, we could have a unit like this that is a 2.8 pounds per square inch. And I want to convert that into pounds per square foot. So my 2.8 pounds per square inch is going to be 2.8 pounds over 1 square inch. Now I look at my units to see what has to change. In the numerator of my units, pounds and pounds. That does not need to change. So we're good with that. In the denominator of my units, I've got square inches going to square feet. That's what needs to change here. So I have to get rid of the square inches. Since it's on bottom, I need to put square inches on top so that they will cross cancel out. And I'm changing it to square feet. One square foot is 144 square inches. So the square inches will cancel out. 2.8 times 144 is 403.2 pounds. On bottom, one times one square foot is one square foot. So that is 403.2 pounds per square foot. We didn't have to divide out at the end there because the denominator was already 1. Um, if that denominator is anything but 1, we have to divide by it to reduce it back down to it. It's what we call a unit rate. A unit rate simply means that the number in the denominator is a 1. And once that number in the denominator is a 1, then we can switch it so that the, the fraction appearance, the rate appearance, is just in our units rather than in the whole number, rather than having the one with it. <clears throat> well, if we have somebody that is traveling at 1.2 miles per minute, are they speeding? They're going down the freeway at 1.2 miles per minute. Oh. Freeway speed is given in miles per hour, so we'll have to make that change. 1.2 miles per minute is 1.2 miles in one minute. In our units, in our numerator, miles and miles, so the miles don't change. Minutes and hours, so the minutes have to change to hours. Minutes are on bottom, so we're going to put them on top to get rid of them. 
hours on bottom, one hour is 60 minutes. So the minutes cancel out. 1.2 miles times 60 is 72 miles. One times one hour is one hour. Again, this lower unit, the, the number in the denominator is a one. So that's already reduced out. That is just 72 miles per hour. <clears throat> It's not always just one unit that needs to change. Like in our first example, we had to change both, both units in the rate. And we might have something that is listed as 0.84 ounces per square inch. And we need to know what is that in pounds per square foot. We'll set this up 0.84 ounces over one square inch. Now both units need to change. Ounces have to become pounds. So let's do that. Ounces are on top, so to get rid of them, I'm gonna put them on bottom. So we'll put pounds on top. The relationship is one pound equals 16 ounces. So the ounces are now gone. <clears throat> on bottom, square inches are gonna become square feet. Get rid of the square inches, so let's do that. So since square inches started out on bottom, we'll put them on top to cancel them out. Square feet goes on bottom. One square foot is 144 square inches. So the square inches cancel out. On top now we have 0 0.84 times 144, which is 120.96. That is pounds is the only unit I have left on top. On bottom, we have 1 times 16 times 1 square foot. That is 16 square feet. So we'll divide this out. 120.96 divided by 16 is 7.56 pounds per square foot. Um, for you guys, you might end up with a looking at pumps. You might have a pump that is rated at 4,200 gallons per minute. Well, is that a good pump? Well, most pumps are rated in CFM. An average pump is between 8 and 12 CFM. CFM is cubic feet per minute, just an abbreviation for that unit. So we need to change our 4,200 gallons per minute, or sorry, 4,200 gallons per hour, I should put in there. 4,200 gallons per minute would be a pretty, uh, pretty impressive pump. Um, so it's 4,200 gallons per hour. We need to change that into cubic feet per minute see what we get. So I start out with my 4,200 gallons over one hour. Now gallons have to become cubic feet, so let's do that. We're going to put gallons on bottom to cancel them out because they start out on top going into cubic feet. Well, one cubic foot, depending on where you look, it's either 7.48 or 7.5 gallons. I'm going to use 7.5 because it's easier to use. So the gallons will cancel out. Now my hours have to become minutes. So the hours are on bottom. To get rid of them, I'm going to put them on top. One hour is 60 minutes. The hours cancel out. On top, I have 4,200 times one cubic foot times one. That's 4,200 cubic feet. On bottom, I have 1 times 7.5 times 60 minutes, 450 minutes. 4,200 divided by 450 is 9.33 cubic feet per minute. That's close to the middle of that range of the average pump. The 9.33 CFM is what that pump is at.
So we might have something that is pumping at eight cubic inches per second. And I want to figure out what is that in cubic feet per minute. So eight cubic inches per second is eight cubic inches per one second. I need to change cubic inches into cubic feet. So let's do that. Cubic inches will go on bottom, so, so they cancel out with the cubic inches on top. Cubic feet on top. So one cubic foot is 12 cubed or 1,728 cubic inches. Now we have to change the seconds into minutes. Seconds are on bottom, so to get rid of them, I put them on top. There are 60 seconds in one minute. So the seconds cancel out. Now we multiply on top. We have 8 times 1 cubic foot times 60. That's 480 cubic feet. On bottom, we have 1 times 1728 times 1 minute. That's 1,728 minutes. So we need to divide that out. 480 divided by 1,728 gives us 0.2778. And that is the cubic feet per minute. So 8 cubic inches in a second sounds like quite a bit, but it is not. That's actually a very, very, very slow pump. We might have something that is at let's make this a little more realistic here. Now let's do 0.75 ounces per cubic inch. I want to change that into pounds per cubic foot. I want you guys to try that one in your notes. See if you can get it to work out. We'll go over it in about a minute. So we have 0.75 ounces in one cubic inch. We need to change ounces into pounds. So to do that, ounces on bottom, pounds on top, one pound is 16 ounces. So the ounces have canceled out. We also need to change cubic inches into cubic feet. So I'm going to get rid of the cubic inches that are on bottom, so I'm going to put them on top. Cubic feet will go on bottom. One cubic foot is 1,728 cubic inches. So the cubic inches cancels out. So on top, we have 0.75 times 1 pound times 1,728, which is 1,296 pounds. On bottom, we have 1 times 16 times 1 cubic foot. That is 16 cubic feet. So we just divide that out. The 1296 divided by 16 
gives us 81 pounds per cubic foot. That's about the density of some of your medium density metals, by the way. Okay, so in the metric system, we tend to just move decimal points rather than using those conversion factors. And that still works as long as it's just metric units that we are changing. If we are moving at 2.8 kilometers per minute, that's our speed. If I want to change that into meters per minute, all I have to do is set this up 2.8 kilometers per minute is 2.8 kilometers in one minute. The minutes don't need to change. All that needs to change is the kilometers have to become meters. So the one minute isn't going to change. I'm going to change the kilometers to meters. Notice I'm not using a conversion factor here. I'm just setting the next fraction next to it. To get from kilometers to meters, on my chart is three spots to the right. So I'm gonna move my decimal point three spots to the right. I move it one, then I have to fill in a zero and another zero. That is 2,800 meters. Since my bottom unit is just a one, that is 2,800 meters per minute. So as long as it, we're only changing the one unit and the unit we're changing is metric, we can just move the decimal points. But what if we're not changing the metric, metric unit? What if I had my 2,800 meters per minute here that we just did? And what if I want to change that to meters per second? So we have 2,800 meters over one minute. Now I don't need to change the meters, I need to change the minutes into seconds. I have to use, there is no metric time, so I have to use my conversion factors here. To get rid of minutes, I'm gonna put it on top, going to seconds on bottom. One minute is 60 seconds. The minutes cancel out. 280 meters times one, or 2,800 meters times one is 2,800 meters. 1 times 60 seconds is 60 seconds. So now the bottom number is, is not 1, so we have to divide it out. 2,800 divided by 60, 46.67 meters per second. So even with the metric units, we might still have to use these conversion factors if we have a standard unit like time included in that unit. So let's say that we have someone that is is clipping along doing 20 meters per second. And I want to convert that into kilometers per hour. So I am going to have to convert both units. My 20 meters over one second. Meters are going to become kilometers, seconds are going to become hours. It doesn't matter which one I do first. I'm going to go ahead and change the seconds into hours. Seconds are on bottom, so seconds are going to go on top. Now I am going to cheat and use what you said earlier. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour, 60 times 60. So the seconds are gone. I mean, 20 times 3,600 is 72,000 meters. One times one hour is one hour. You only really need to change the meters to kilometers. I have it per hour, but I want to have it kilometers per hour, not meters per hour. Now, since I'm changing a metric unit, I don't need a conversion factor. I'm just going to move the decimal place. I'm going from meters to kilometers. 
which is three spots to the left on the chart. So I'll move my decimal point three spots to the left. That is 72 kilometers. The one hour hasn't changed. That's 72 kilometers over one hour. Since it's over one, I don't have anything to divide out. So that's just 72 kilometers per hour. 72 kilometers per hour, by the way, is somewhere around 45 miles per hour. Um, we might have something like 42 grams per centimeter squared and want to know what is that in kilograms per meter squared. So now we have two units, but both units are metric. So in that case, all we're going to be doing is moving decimal places. 42 grams per centimeter squared is 42 grams over one centimeter squared. Now I need to change the grams into kilograms on my chart. From grams to kilograms is three spots to the left. So I'm going to move my decimal point three spots to the left. If there's no decimal here, so it's at the end of the number. We go one, two, three, and fill in that zero. That is 0 0.042 kilograms. Centimeters squared has to get changed into meters squared. Well, on that chart, from centimeters to meters is two spots to the left. But it's not centimeters and meters, it's centimeters squared and meters squared. So that means every spot on the chart is two decimal places. So two places on the chart is four decimal places. So my number, my decimal point has to move four spots to the left. There's no decimal point here, so it's at the end of the number. So we go one, and then we fill in zeros. Two, three, four. So that's 0 .0001 meters squared. Now since the bottom number is not a one, we have to divide it out. 0 0.042 times 0 0.042 divided by 0 0.0001 is 420. 420 kilograms per meter squared. We might have something that is. Oh, let's see here. Um, let's say it is 800. Now let's make it more realistic. Let's go 400 kilograms per meter cubed. I want to know what is that in milligrams per centimeter cubed. So 400 kilograms per meter cubed is 400 kilograms over one meter cubed. So let's do my chart here. Got my grams or my meters in the middle here. Going to the left, I have decagrams, hectograms, and kilograms. Going to my right, I have decimeters, centimeters, and millimeters. Of course, those prefixes attached to both of them. It's just I know which direction I have to go with each unit. So I have to change my kilograms into milligrams. To get from kilograms to milligrams, it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six spots to the right on the chart. I have to move my decimal point six spots to the right. I have to add zeros. There's 400 million milligrams. My meters cubed has to be changed into centimeters cubed. Well, on the chart from meters to centimeters is two spots to the right. But since it's cubed, each place on the chart is three decimal places. The two spots on the chart is six decimal places. So my decimal point, which is at the end of the number, has to move six spots. I add zeros to do that. That is one million centimeters cubed. Now I divide that out. 
400 million divided by 1 million is 400 milligrams per centimeter cubed. So even though the units changed here, the numbers, um, the unit, the decimal places moved the same in both numbers. So the overall number is exactly the same. 400 kilograms per meter cubed is equivalent to 400 milligrams per centimeter cubed. I want you to try one in your notes. Let's see how this goes. We're going to do 600 milliliters per second. I want you to convert that into liters per minute. I'll give you a minute to do that conversion, then we'll go over it. So we have 600 milliliters per second, 600 milliliters over one second. Let's do the, the standard unit first. We're going from seconds to minutes. Put seconds on top so they cancel out, minutes on bottom. One minute is 60 seconds. Those seconds cancel out. 600 time, milliliters times 60 is 36,000 milliliters. Over 1 times 1 minute is 1 minute. So we've got the denominator of our units where we want it. We want that to be minutes. Now we need to change the milliliters into liters. Again, all we're going to do is move the decimal point here. So the 1 minute is going to stay the same. From liters to milliliters is 3 spots to the left on the chart. Move our decimal point three spots to the left, that's just 36 liters. So that is 36 liters per minute. Any questions? Okay, so we've got a couple more days of homework out of that packet. Today's homework is still out of that packet. On page 238, it's problems 57 through 64. And on page 266, it's problems 55 through 62. These are ones, make sure you do a, a good share of these because this is the sets of problems that people struggle with the most on the test. Give you an idea where we're sitting. We do have one more quiz here in unit three, and then probably either Wednesday or Thursday of next week will be our unit three test. So we are getting close. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so we have about 14 minutes left for you guys to start your homework if you want to. I will be on the network for a little while if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, if you want to,